Thank you for joining me today. I um, appreciate your time. I'm going to talk really about something that's, I think, important to all of us humans, which is really about trust and transparency. And I think one thing that's fundamental to, to the relationships that we have with each other is actually a, a fundamental notion of trust and transparency. And we believe machines shouldn't be any different. In fact, all the narrative about AI, one thing that is becoming increasingly important, not just you know, humans trusting machines, but also governments, as they realize the importance of AI, more and more so, regulations might be getting in place. We are at a place where, you know, at the advent of GDPR as well, it is becoming important for us to really raise the level of awareness and put capabilities out there technical capabilities that allow people, not just data scientists actually, business people, to really go and trust and, and uh, trust the machines and realize that the decisions they are making are transparent as well. So I'm going to take you through a small journey on what capabilities we have released and the level at which they exist. And later in the, uh, in the morning today, I'm going to give a 40-minute talk, again, in a, a deep technical dive on how they really work. So most importantly, let's look at where we are today. You know, somewhere around 94% of companies believe that AI is really key to their success. Now, that's not surprising, given all the narrative around us. However, only 35% of the people really, or businesses, realize that they really can trust the machinery that they have. Uh, they can really put a trust in the decisions that are being made. And Interestingly, 60% of, of the companies really believe, or the business people really believe, they really can trust the decisions to be fair as well. This really leads to the, the bias issues that might exist in technology. And overall, just from the point of view of practical adaption, we are really seeing only one in 20 companies are really realizing the benefits of AI right now. Thereby, it le leads us to a dichotomy I think everybody has tremendous hope for AI, but where we exist today, there is a difference between hope and what we are delivering right now. And we, re we release the capability, actually, of trust and transparency in the IBM Cloud that allows you to really take your AI. It doesn't have to run in the IBM Cloud. It can be running wherever you are, actually. It can be running in AWS. It can be running in, in Google, or it can be running in, in Microsoft. We allow your AI to be wrapped around and to really deliver trust and transparency to that particular AI you are getting benefit from. So most importantly, I think, as I said, there are three fundamental tenets to the capabilities that we delivered. Number one, it's really about detecting the bias. Now, interestingly, as most of us are aware, there are actually, you know, when models are really built, when AI models are really built, they actually, data scientists really do a lot of work in making sure the models and the data that goes into them may be free of the skewed nature of the data that might get in. Let me give you a quick example. For example, if I was building a model for uh, mortgage approvals, and if I take the, the data for last 50 years as an example, what might happen is that if the data point I'm looking for is mortgages over $1 million, now, it will not be a surprise to a lot of people that the data might be skewed in the favor of approval for males than females, because not that many females were applying at that point in time for mortgages that were over $1 million. That doesn't mean to say the bias was intentional in any way. That just happens to be the case that the data I'm collecting is skewed in a certain way. That doesn't mean to say it needs to continue that way in the future. So most importantly, bias gets in at the time the models are built. And interestingly, when the models are really built, the training data is only a representation of reality. Now, we all must admit that's not a reality in itself. No representation is a reality in itself. And what this capability really solves is it actually detects bias at runtime. When these models are actually running, it detects bias at runtime, which is really when the transactions are taking place. It just doesn't detect bias at runtime. It also gives you guidance how to actually mitigate that bias as well while the transactions are taking place and the feedback is being collected as well. The second tenant of this capability is really about explainability. 
Now, as we all know, the more critical decisions uh, AI takes, the more important it is for AI to explain those decisions as well. Again, example of claims approval or mortgage approval or credit uh, rating as well. It is many times it's actually not just a nice to have with, uh, with the regulations like G GDPR, it is becoming critical for us to have explainability as part of AI. And in fact, there have been a lot of research going on in this area, and the capabilities that we release, released actually uh, last month allow us to raise the level of, of technical capability delivered to businesses, not just to data scientists, not just to geeks like me. It's really the capabilities that are released to business people so that while the transactions are taking place, they just can type a transaction number and it can tell them why was that loan denied, for example. Was it the credit rating of that particular person? Was it the address they lived in? Was their income? Uh, bad or other factors that went into it. And we'll look through some very simple examples as well. And the third tenant of this capability is really about traceability. Now, traceability is really all about, again, regulations as well, regulations like GDPR, that as the decisions are being done, I would like to know what data was used, actually, to make those decisions, what model, actually, was used to make that decision as well. How old was the model? Who built the model? Who touched it last? All of that lineage of that model, all the lineage of that decision, as the decision was being done, needed to be traced back in many situations. And it allows, this capability allows us to actually trace those decisions in a very simple business-centric way. Again, most important, I think we do this at runtime. We also do it in a very simple to use business-centric way as well. So let's look at some of these capabilities. This is actually the first dashboard that you see when you really log into that capability, where the, the capability gives you the health and the performance of the models that are being deployed in a very simple, easy-to-see way. And as you can see, eight models are deployed in this particular situation in your enterprise. You know, there are accuracy alerts for three of the models. By that, I really mean businesses can set, set thresholds with respect to, I would like to know if the accuracy of the model drops below a certain threshold. Again, this accuracy is the accuracy at runtime, which is most important, as opposed to the accuracy of the model that was built at the time the data scientists really built the model, which is a representation of that reality, not a reality in itself. And, and interestingly, we allow you to actually set uh, something called fairness attributes. For example, fairness attributes can be on societal dimensions, gender, race, color, and so on. But they may also be on non-societal dimensions as well. For example, I would like to actually not be biased against certain zip codes, as an example. Or could be other notions that the businesses might have, which may not be exactly societal as well. So we give you actually a simple flag of if we find out there is bias creeping into a particular model as these decisions are being done, we actually give raise a red flag, as you can see on some of the models here. Let's dive into a very simple uh, flag right there on claims approval. So we are going to double click on the model for claim approval, and you're going to come to this screen. Now, that screen actually gives you a runtime basis of a, a notion of bias for a particular model, for a particular attribute that the AI operations person will set up for example, in this particular case, I'm looking at the model and three attributes I'm monitoring for that model, which is on car value, policy holder's age, and policy age as well. And interestingly, for that model, I'm observing a bias creeping in for the policy age. So I'm discriminating against policy holders who have not been my customers for a very long time. So what I do is I just double click on the view details right there, and you go to the screen. That actually tells you that, you know, that gives you a, a further deep dive into that attribute and gives you the range of the age of the, of, of the policy holders. And here I observe that I'm actually being biased against the, the age group 18 to 23. And it gives me the first question I'll have whenever somebody tells me, hey, your decisions are biased. My first question will be, you know, can you get, tell me my exposure? What I really do at that point is I actually click on that, that red bar right there on the left-hand side. It actually tells me all the transactions that went through 
in that exposed region right there, which is an uh, there comes a screen which actually gives me all the transactions. I can double click on any particular transaction, and that takes me to this final screen, which is really about explainability. It can tell me why the decision was taken. For example, in this particular uh, case, that transaction was actually denied with a confidence of 90%. And the, the factors that contributed to denial of that particular transaction, policyholder's age, which was most important to it, car, uh, the brand of the car in this insurance claims uh, uh, scenario was most important, and the factors that would have actually led to approval of that particular uh, transaction as well went into that too. So in a very easy to understand way, it raises the level of abstraction of this capability to not data scientists, to really business people. And this capability is really all about making sure businesses can get trust and transparency into the AI processes that they are deploying. I'll, I'll appreciate if you come back to, to the talk we are giving at, at 11 o'clock. Hilary Kerner and myself are really taking through, uh, uh, you through the, the details of the process and really giving you a deep dive into the demo. And these capabilities are available in IBM Cloud for any, anyone to try, and we are pr very proud of it. And this will really raise the level of abstraction of the capabilities to a point where really businesses can go and try it out, as opposed to AI models being residing in the closets of the data scientists. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.